Welcome to this number theory primer. In this lecture, we'll discuss the notion of relatively prime integers, which is a fundamental notion in elementary number theory. And let us recall the relevant fact that we need. So we proved Euclid's theorem. In fact, we gave two proofs of it. Uh, it says that if a and b are integers, not both of them zero, so that the GCD exists, uh, then there exist integers x and y, such that the GCD is the corresponding linear combination of a and b, meaning gcd a comma b is ax plus by. Okay, here are some problems uh, for practice. And now let us get to the material of this lecture. So we define the notion of relative primality. Suppose a and b are integers, not both zero again. Then we say that a and b are relatively prime. A and B are relatively prime if their GCD is 1. That's just a definition. What is it trying to say? It's, it says that if you have, let's say, a prime dividing both A and B, so assume GCD A and B is 1, and P is a prime dividing A and B, then what happens? Then P becomes a common divisor, and hence GCD would be at least P. So what it says is that if GCD A and B is one, then actually there is no prime which divides both of them. And that is where the name comes from, relatively prime. There is no common prime factor. The only common factor, the only positive common factor is one, basically. All right, uh, let's see some examples. So eight and 15 are relatively prime. You can compute the GCD or see that there are no common prime factors. Eight and 12 are not relatively prime because for instance, two is a common factor. All right, uh, suppose we have a prime and some positive integer, let's say, or any integer, uh, then P and N are relatively prime if P does not divide N. So if P divides N, then clearly they are not relatively prime. They, they have a common factor, which is greater than one. But if P does not divide N, uh, then also they are relatively prime. What I'm trying to say is that this is actually n if and only if. if. If p divided n, then clearly they couldn't have been relatively prime, but the converse is also true. So let's prove it. So suppose p does not divide n, we need to understand that p and n are relatively prime. And if not, suppose they are not relatively prime, then they have some, some prime q, which divides both of them. If q is a prime dividing p, then q has to be equal to p, because p is a prime. And that means p divides n because q divides n which contradicts our assumption that P does not divide N. So it's a simple statement and hence I'm not stating this as a theorem or anything, but please realize this as long as it takes. Okay, so here is our first lemma. Suppose again, we have two integers A and B, not both of them are zero. Then A and B are relatively prime if and only if one can find integers X and Y such that the corresponding linear, integer linear combination is one. So that's a very nice criterion to detect relative primality, or at least it's useful in proving things. All right, so what is the proof? Uh, so first assume, A and B are relatively prime. A and B. are relatively prime, then, I mean, by definition, we have GCD is one, which implies by Euclid's theorem that there exist integers X and Y, such that AX plus BY is one. So one direction is clear from Euclid's theorem. The other direction is even more obvious. Now assume AX plus BY equals one for some X and Y. We want to show that GCD of A and B is one, but that is clear because so if D is a common divisor,
So if d is a common divisor, then d divides ax plus by. Right? If it divides both a and b, then it will also divide ax plus by, which implies d divides 1, which implies d is equal to 1 because d we started with the positive d. So the only positive common divisor is 1, and hence gcd of a and b is 1. That's it. Very simple. Now we have a nice uh, corollary or a or fact that one should know. It's that suppose we have a prime and two integers a and b such that p divides the product of a and b. Then p divides either a or b or both. This is a logical R. So this is not true in general. If you don't, you know, if you don't have a prime here, just some arbitrary integer, then this is not true. For instance, uh, you have uh, 4 divides uh, 12 or 2 into 6, right? But that that doesn't mean that 4 either divides 2 or 4 divides 6. It doesn't divide either of them, but their product can be divisible by 4. So um, primes are special in this regard. And let's, let's give a proof. So suppose P does not divide A. And our goal is to show that, goal is to show that P divides B. So if we can show that P divides B, we, can, we are done. Under this assumption, of course, that P does not divide A. Now by what we remarked earlier, P does not divide A implies that GCD P comma A is one, right? And thus by Euclid, there exist integers x and y such that ax plus py equals 1 because gcd of a and p is 1. And now here we multiply both sides by b. We multiply both sides by b. And now look at the left hand side. This term is divisible by p and that term is also divisible by p because p divides a b. That's the hypothesis. So therefore p divides LHS implies p divides RHS implies p divides b. And that's it. Uh, that is what we wanted to do. So this is something that we should always keep in mind that if a prime divides the product of two integers, then it divides one of the two integers or both of them. All right. But actually what's going on in this proof is the following. Uh, I mean, one can generalize this statement immediately. It's basically saying that suppose we have D and A relatively prime and D divides AB. Then, I mean, D divides AB for some integer B, then D divides B. So this is what is really going on in the previous slide. And the proof is exactly the same, ditto same, so I'll leave that to you. And with that, I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. I also have Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.